Hi everyone, Ian here from the Media Center. And in this video, I'll be covering Canon's YDR and Log picture profiles and showing you how to correctly expose with them. Picture profiles basically mean the look the camera is giving the image. This is determined by something called a gamma curve, which changes the saturation, contrast, and dynamic range of an image. A standard picture profile generally has a very limited dynamic range of around five to six stops. This is fine to use when there's even lighting. However, in high contrast situations, when there's a lot of bright areas and dark areas in the frame at the same time, it becomes very difficult to hold all of that detail. Larger dynamic range gamma curves were designed to address this problem. And this is what Canon YDR and Log allow us to do. To access the picture profile menu, press the custom picture button on the camera. And once open, navigate to set, select camera, and scroll through to Canon YDR. Canon YDR is a hybrid profile which sits between 709, so the standard profile, and log. It retains the wider dynamic range similar to log at around 12 stops, but captures the midtones and shadows in a similar way to the standard 709 gamma curve. What this means is that YDR can capture a larger range of information in the brighter region of the image which provides a better highlight roll off, meaning you can prevent clipping from occurring as quickly. The benefit of YDR still capturing the shadows and midtones in a similar way to the standard profile is that it can retain more saturation and contrast than a log profile, meaning less post-production work is needed to achieve a pleasing image. Now for YDR to have a larger dynamic range, and capture more information in the highlights, it needs to bring the white point to a lower percentage value on the IRE scale. This will allow for more space above the white point for highlights, which creates that more gradual gamma curve. So unlike a standard profile, which places the white point at 90 to 95%, YDR recommends placing the white point at 70% for optimal exposure. Because the white point has been moved lower down on the IRE scale, this also means skin tones and the middle gray point are slightly altered as well. These are drastic changes because the shadows and midtones are acting in a very similar way to a standard profile, but they are a little different and need to be set correctly to get the best image from the YDR profile. Middle gray should now be set at around 40%. Skin tone should sit at approximately 55 to 60. And again, the white point needs to be sitting at about 70%. YDR is perfect for a lot of shooting environments. And it's a really nice profile to work with in post-production. So I'd recommend always using it over the standard picture profile. However, when the scene becomes a little too challenging for YDR, and this will mainly occur if there's a large contrast ratio in your scene, then you'll also have Canon Log available. To activate Log, change the picture profile via the custom picture button to Cinema. Instantly, you should see that the image becomes much flatter, less saturated, and will probably feel darker. Log profiles are gamma curves which capture a high dynamic range, around 12 to 13 stops in the C100's case. This allows a huge amount of information to be retained across the shadows, midtones, and highlights at the same time. Log in comparison to other regular profiles has been engineered to appear flat on most displays. This is because up until recently, monitors could only output a standard dynamic range, which meant they couldn't show the entire brightness range of the high dynamic range file. To allow the additional detail to be viewable by camera operators, log curves squeeze the HDR information closer together so it can fit into the standard output. This alteration to the curve produces the flat and desaturated image the log is known for. So why is dynamic range important? Well, dynamic range is one of the defining characteristics in making an image appear more cinematic, but it also provides a lot more flexibility for image manipulation during post-production. However, this improved flexibility brings with it more complex workflows. Log profiles tend to be more difficult to focus, expose, and color correct, as they lack contrast and saturation. 
and are also more prone to becoming grainy and noisy in the shadow areas of the image if it's incorrectly exposed. Whenever possible, avoid using log in low light as most night scenes are only using around five to 10 stops of dynamic range and generally rely on the darker stops of light below middle gray. This is because there's naturally going to be more shadow in a darker image. Using log when the majority of the image falls in shadow means the majority of your image will have grain in it as well. Now all manufacturers design their log profiles slightly differently, but they all follow a similar trend. They're generally flatter than a regular profile, retain a lot of their usable dynamic range above the middle gray exposure point, and hide the majority of their noise and grain within the lower shadow region. Because of this, log profiles love light and perform at their most optimal when the sensor is slightly overexposed past the manufacturer's recommended settings. This is possible because of the additional dynamic range which log possesses. Its curve in the brighter region helps provide a gradual transition between the white point, the highlights, and the eventual clipping point, meaning it's more difficult to clip a log image in comparison to a standard or wide DR image. Overexposing allows the log image to lift the shadows closer toward the middle gray point. This means noise and grain will be more dissipated, providing an overall cleaner image to start with. In post-production, this overexposed image can then be brought back down to the correct exposure values. And as the shadows become crushed, it will hide the remaining noise, which may have still been visible. So what are the appropriate values to expose for C-Log? Well, Canon recommends the following. Middle gray is suggested to sit at approximately 33%, skin tones at around 35 to 45%, and the white point at approximately 63%. But remember, to get that optimal image quality with less noise in the shadows, we want to overexpose, and one stop brighter is normally what we recommend. For this, set middle gray at around 38 to 40%, skin tones between 45 to 55%, and the white point at about 68 to 72%. To check and reference these values, this is where your gray card, white card, zebras, and the waveform really come into play. If you ever need to enable log from the main menu, you can do so via the camera settings window under CP locked. This automatically sets the camera to cinema mode. When log is enabled, you'll also have the ability to use a gamma assist located in the LCD viewfinder setup under view assist. View assist presents a standard 709 gamma overlay across the log image. This isn't baked in, it's only a visual representation of what the file may look like once a color and exposure correction has been applied in post-production. Now, this sounds really useful, however, there's a flaw. This view assist is designed around Canon's recommended log IRE values. If this is enabled when we overexpose the C-Log profile, the Rec. 709 overlay will also be brighter than the manufacturer originally intended. Now, if at this point you forget that the view assist is turned on and the image looks really bright, what do you think you're instinctively going to do? Well, you're probably going to try and make your image darker by either closing down the aperture or reducing the ISO level or lowering the output of your film lights. Darkening the overlay to a correctly exposed level will in turn darken the C-Log image file underneath, underexposing it and bringing all the noise and grain we're trying to avoid back into the image. For this reason, unless you're only exposing at Canon's recommended levels, I'd always check that view assist is turned off. Hopefully this has been helpful and it's given you a bit more insight into the Canon C100's YDR and log picture profiles. Until next time, keep shooting, keep being creative, and we'll see you soon.